How's it everyone? Welcome back to another string review right here on Open Court. I'm Kent and today we're taking a look at a string that I have never tried ever so I'm excited to finally try out the Tawalson Joker Core. Let's check it out. So before we get into this review, if you guys like these reviews, string reviews and racket reviews I put out, make sure you guys hit the like and subscribe button to support this channel and keep these reviews coming. So the Joker Core was recommended by one of my hitting partners and I have heard of Joker Core before. I didn't even know what it was. It is a poly and it's very unique in its construction. So what makes this Joker Core unique is if you guys look on the back of the package, this is the cross section of the joker core as you can see it has a, a center core and a really thick outer shell that center core is a highly viscous material and it gives it a little bit more flexibility a little bit more power a little bit more feel and pop this construction is very similar to like for example the head links touch i reviewed last year that string also has a thick outer shell and a core there are a few strings out there like this, although I've never tried many of them. I'm curious to see if this is going to play like that Lynx Touch and if that outer thick shell and the center core has uh, similar characteristics. So this Tualsen Joker Core, as far as I can tell, it comes in two colors, a black and a red, and it comes in two gauges, one, two, three, and one, two, eight millimeter. I'm testing the one, two, three because I like thinner gauges for a little bit more spin power and crucially, they give a little bit more feel than the thicker gauges. I couldn't find a price online for the Tualsen Joker Core, but I'm guessing it's probably around $10, $12. I've seen it in uh, British Pound Sterling, so if you guys just convert that, maybe it's around $12, but it's not too expensive. Tualsen strings are very high quality. They're made in Japan. I tested the Devil Spin earlier, and I really like that string for its spin, but from what I heard, my friend who recommended this string to me says this plays very different from the, the Devil Spin. All right guys, so here's the Joker Core. I got it strung up in a racket I haven't used in a while, but it's one of my favorite rackets. It's the 2013 Speed Pro. And I got it strung at 50 in the mains and 48 in the crosses. Because this is a tight 1820, I decided to string it a little bit lower than I usually do. And I don't know if you guys can see on the camera, but you can see that there's like a reflective light off the surface of the string. That's because that outer sh uh, shell is transparent and it's the red color with the core in the center. So I have never tried out the Joker core. I know it's popular in Japan and a friend of mine recommended this string to me. So before I get into my full thoughts, let's hear from my friend who recommended this string to me about what he likes about the Joker core. All right guys, I'm here with Remy. He's one of my hitting partners we hit every Sunday and he's the one that actually recommended the uh, Tualsen Joker Core to me because it's his favorite string. So Remy, why do you like the Joker Core so much? So the jo I'm not one of those players that can tell, you know, strings and rackets. It's kind of all the same for me, but uh, this one actually stood out because of the, the sound that the, the strings make. Mm -hmm. um, it does, I'd say it plays like any other, like, you know, $20 plus performance strings, but yeah. uh, it holds its tension well, um, but it has that distinct sound that I like yeah. and uh, it's very satisfying to hit with. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. Um, so Remy, what do you use your uh, preferred setup with the Joker Core? Um, so I use a V Core 95 mm -hmm. and uh, my tension is about 40 to 42, uh, kind of on the lower side. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you, Remy. So let's start with the pros of the Tawalsen Joker Core. Now this is what I'm talking about. The Joker Core has a really satisfying pop sensation. I totally agree with my friend Remy. I've been playtesting a lot of soft and muted strings lately and it's been a while since I tried something crisp. The Joker Core is one of the liveliest and most responsive strings I've tried in a long time and it felt so satisfying when striking the ball on ground strokes. The sound when striking the sweet spot can't be underscored. It might seem trivial, but since so much of tennis is mental, having a string that makes you feel confident will allow you to use all of the shots in your arsenal to their fullest. The Joker Core gave me that confidence and I felt comfortable using my full repertoire. Whether on ground strokes or at the net, every time I struck the ball, I felt a sensation from the string bed that I haven't felt in a while. I think the Joker Core might be even more crisp than the Black Head Lynx Tour. 
maybe not quite as crisp as the champagne color, but the fact that I think it stands shoulder to shoulder in terms of feel with my favorite poly is a great sign. Flat serves even felt very satisfying and I felt my shots had a little more power than usual, even out of a tight 1820. The Joker core also is fairly comfortable, but it stands firm on fast swings. In that sense, it feels very similar to the Headlink's touch. That string is meant to stiffen up on fast contact and stay soft and plush on slower swings. Maybe the fact that the Joker Core and Lynx Touch have a similar construction is what makes them feel similar. Even in my stiff 2013 Speed Pro, I felt absolutely zero harshness on full swings. The Joker Core has great dwell time and I could feel the ball sitting on the strings for that split second for me to redirect the momentum. But I do feel the strings stiffen up the deeper the ball sinks in. The ball pocketing assists in power and my flat shots penetrated deep into the court. I felt a lot more connected to my shots with this joker cord than I did with the devil spin. The devil spin also feels stiffer and lower powered, just something to keep in mind. Another area I was surprised by was the tension stability. This is not a huge priority for me because I usually cut strings out after a few uses, but I felt almost no tension drop in the three sessions I used the joker core. Since this is a simple round poly, I don't think it will snap that fast either. If you don't like restringing often and want something that will hold tension well, this could be a good option for you. And lastly, I really like the Joker Core at net. I like to utilize a variety of slices, drop shots, angle volleys, and short angles when I'm moving forward, and the crisp sensation allowed me to use my full court arsenal to the fullest. I did have some trouble with slices, but I'll touch on that later. Drop shots and angles is where I really like this string because I felt so connected and knew exactly where I could drop my finesse shots. I also really liked attacking volleys because that pop sensation kept me confident on punch volleys and overheads. Those were by far the most satisfying shots. Even on approach volleys or low volleys, I could dig those back easily and I felt I could keep the shot low so I could follow it up to the net. As much as I liked that crisp popping sensation on full swings from the baseline, Overall, I think I like the Joker Core more at net for a few reasons which I'll get into now. So moving into the cons of the Tawalson Joker Core. The first issue I had with this string was that despite that crisp and satisfying pop, I felt the Joker Core lacked control on my ground strokes. I actually think this string performed better on flatter line drive shots than on loopy high topspin that cleared the net high. I sent a lot of forehands past the baseline when I tried to aim high and deep. When I flattened out my swing a little more, I found better success in keeping the ball inside the baseline. The joker core feels a bit sticky in its outer coating, so the spin generation isn't the best in my opinion. Having my joker core in my 18x20 Speed Pro definitely hurt its spin potential, but that racket usually gets great control on aggressive ground strokes, so I was surprised at just how many balls I was sailing despite feeling so connected with that satisfying response. Also. Even in my tighter pattern, I noticed that the strings were getting stuck out of place here and there. I usually never have to straighten strings in my tighter patterns, but I had to occasionally with the Joker Core. With its softer construction, decent power level, sticky outer coating, lower spin potential, and good tension maintenance, Joker Core almost seems like a multi-filament masquerading as a poly. Another area I struggled in with the Joker Core was my kick serve. My flat and slicers felt great because the string added some much needed pop to my flat and slices and I could pressure my opponents with those no problem. The slice serve into the body was my go-to serve with this string. But my kick serve is the serve I use on about 70% of my second serves and I just couldn't get my serve to kick up and away like I can with typical polys. My kick serve isn't great to begin with in my Speed Pro and I felt I had to defend almost immediately on a poorly hit kicker. When I tried to add more topspin by snapping my wrist more on my follow through, the stickiness of the joker core pulled the ball down into the net. When I tried to pronate more up and away from my body, I couldn't get enough natural topspin to drop the ball inside the lines. I had to strike it precisely to hit an effective kick serve and it was at times too much work for me. Most people want a string that makes life easier and the joker core unfortunately made life harder for me on my kick serve. Lastly, I also struggled to keep slices from the baseline low and skidding. This wasn't as big an issue as my kick serve, but I thought I should still mention this. I felt the ball sinking into the string bed, but the stickiness of the strings kept the ball in the strings a split second too long. When I followed through on slices, I felt the ball coming off at a slightly higher trajectory than usual. 
I'm not sure how many players actually notice these things, but since I specifically look for things like this in my reviews, and because I've been using this 2013 Speed Pro for 10 years, I felt this marginal difference. But overall, the crisp response of the Joker Core made this a really fun playtest, and I think the pros outweigh the cons for me with this string. So per usual, who do I think the Tualson Joker Core string is for? I believe it's for players who like a crisp response and utilize a variety of shots as well as the full length and width of the tennis court. Flatter hitters will probably benefit more from this string than vertical swingers because the Joker Core is not a super heavy spin machine. Also, I felt the Joker Core was fairly comfortable but also stiffened up on full swings. If you have a slower swing and want something that is comfortable but not too springy, the Joker Core fits that bill. If you like multi-filament but don't like that it breaks or unravels so often, Joker Core could be a good substitute provided you have a healthy arm. So what do you guys think of the Joker Core? Have you tried it? What are some other crisp strings you like? Let me know in the comments and if you haven't tried any of Tawalsen's strings yet, give them a try. Thank you for watching this review of the Tawalsen Joker Core string right here on Open Court. If you guys like this content, be sure to overhead smash that like and subscribe button and I'll see you on an open court.